take a look at some of these images. These are some of my high key portraits. I love shooting high key portraits. The reason why I like high key is because it has a freshness, an openness, a, a brightness about it that other images don't. It allows my clients to look as good as possible as well because I'm lighting them with large soft light sources. High key portraits are amazing. Another great thing about high key portraits is that they stand out in your feed. They'll stand out in your portfolio because they're brighter than most other images that people will be scrolling past. So it helps to get attention with high key. But ultimately it's another feather in your photography cap. It allows you to do another genre of photography that will impress people, impress your clients and hopefully make you more money. Would you like to be able to shoot high key images like this? That's exactly what we're going to teach you in this video. You'll hear a lot of tips from me about shooting high key, and you'll see a complete studio shoot with our model Cassidy, showing you how I do it and showing you the results that you can get from a high key shoot. Now there's a lot of misunderstanding about high key imagery. A lot of people think it's simply an overexposed image, which it's not. A high key image has predominantly lighter tones, but it is still well exposed. It's well exposed because it has a full range of tones. Most good high key images have a deep black in there somewhere and a really bright crisp white. It's just that the white or the lighter tones predominate in the image. When I shoot my high key images, I still want to have somewhere in that image that's, that's completely black because it makes my images look so much more punchy. They don't look flat and uninteresting, but we'll talk about that in a little while. You can shoot high key images indoors or outdoors. I shoot mostly indoors because I have a studio and it gives me more options. But if you're shooting outdoors, you just need to find a bright open area to do your shots. You need to plan the time of day that you're going to be there if you're using natural light. Make sure that your backgrounds are fairly bright and airy and expose your model similar to that bright airy background. You'll have a high key image. You can see some of the outdoor images that I've done with high key. Some of them are using bright sunlight, direct sunlight. Some of them are using more shaded locations or overcast locations. So there's no reason why you can't do this technique outdoors as well as indoors. Now I shoot most of mine indoors, as I've said before, mostly because I can control the lighting so much better. I've got a range of different backgrounds in the studio that I can use, and I can do a lot of clothing changes in the studio with my models. Um, it allows me to control the lighting, control the key of the image. If I want to do high key, I can. If I want to do low key, I can, all in the one session. When you're shooting outdoors, try to have your model facing towards the brightest light. Um, similarly, in the studio, we want to have our light frontal onto our model, but outdoors, we want that light, be it sunlight or be it um, overcast or shade, we want that light coming directly frontal onto our model so that it minimizes the shadows. There are degrees of high key imagery. Some photographers like it to be very bright. Other photographers like it a little bit more mid-tone or a little bit above mid-tones. It's up to you. You can control your lighting. You can control your exposure. You can do all those things. So I like a little bit of a mixture, but I think the very high key images tend to stand out a bit more. And they're a little bit more spectacular and have a bit more impact. Because we're working with mostly lighter tones, we need to be careful with our exposure. We need to make sure that we don't lose detail in areas that we want to retain it. Now I'm okay if I lose a bit of detail in my background, if my background is, is really white. I don't want it to be over light, as I'll talk about in a little while. I'm also okay if I lose a little bit of detail in some areas of the clothing, but I want to make sure that my client or my model's skin tone is completely there. I want to make sure that the detail and the texture in their skin tone is there. It's just brighter than it would normally be in a normal image. Now, when we're working on backgrounds, when we're lighting backgrounds, particularly if we're lighting them separately, we need to make sure that they're not over white. Now, over white sounds like a little bit of a stupid thing to say, but we can, when we're taking photographs, have our background too white or it goes past white. If that happens, then you tend to get flare in your images, as you can see from these examples here. My background has been too bright and it's thrown a veil of flare from my lens over the image. 
Now that's okay if that's the effect that you want and sometimes it can look quite cool. But most of the time I want my background to be as bright as it can be without losing detail in it. So I need to have some way to control that. Obviously I can control my lighting up and down and my exposure, but my histogram is going to be my best friend when I'm shooting in high key because that allows me to see my tones in my image and make sure that I'm not losing anything. If you're not sure about histograms, then do a bit of reading up about them because it's a really handy tool that photographers have to control our exposure properly. And your screen, your viewing screen, LCD screen, is going to give you a good idea of what's there, but sometimes it lies to you. Your histogram will never tell you a lie. Your histogram will always tell you the truth. Having said that, your histogram is a JPEG-based option. So it shows you the tones that you would get if you were shooting a JPEG image. Now I shoot mostly raw images. That means that I've got a little bit more leeway with my, with my histogram rather than my JPEG. So I still need to be careful that I don't overlight my background. Now in your histogram, you'll notice that your histogram looks a bit different to normal. Uh, and it may look a bit odd because most of your tones are gonna be down that white or light end of your histogram. It'll be bulky down that end and you'll have maybe a tiny little bit of darker um, tones in that image. You'll have a line going along the bottom of your histogram that shows you those small areas of shadow. Now, generally speaking, the darkest part of my image, which I hope is pretty much solid black, is gonna be the pupils in my subject's eye. I want to still maintain a deep dark black in that high key image somewhere because that helps it to look more powerful, helps it to look more realistic. So I don't want to have those blacks merging down to greys. I wanna keep that histogram, um, the integrity of that histogram, which means that I've got mostly lighter tones down one end, but I still have a little bit of darkness, a little bit of black in that image as well. Another thing that will help you with your exposure is your highlight alert. Call different things with different cameras, but highlight alert will flash when you have an overexposed or an over white section of your image. Um, I, again, I'm happy to have a couple of little bits on the background or little bits on the clothing flashing because I know because I shoot raw, I can pull detail back into those areas. But if you're shooting JPEGs, just minimize those flashing areas as much as possible. If you have your whole subject's face flashing white, then you know that you've overexposed it too much. So you need to back off with your lighting or back off with your exposure that little bit. Now I mentioned before that I like to light my subject from the front. Frontal lighting tends to throw less shadows. I wanna minimize the shadows in my high key image. Frontal lighting is also very flattering. It's the most flattering light that we can use generally in photography. So it achieves two purposes. It allows my subject to have minimum shadows and it also is very flattering for my subject. So I either position my large soft box directly over my camera or I might use two smaller soft boxes just to the side and shoot through the middle. As you'll see when you view the video of our live shoot with Cassidy. We can also use a speed light, um, just a simple speed light. We can bounce it up off the ceiling or bounce it off a white surface or use a shoot through umbrella with our speed light. But make sure that that light's coming pretty much directly onto your subject so that you can have that minimizing of shadows as much as possible. Lighter colored clothing is also a good idea. Not always completely white, because sometimes that's hard to get detail in, a uh, completely white surface, but lighter tones as much as you possibly can, just so that it maintains that lightness over the whole image. So here is a live shoot with Cassidy, where I've shot high key images throughout. We've done three or four different setups. You'll see how the lighting set up. You'll see the results that we get. If you're happy with the content of this video, if you've learned something, if you've enjoyed it, please don't hesitate to subscribe or like the video or ring that notification bell. Also comment below if you don't agree with what I've said, or if you do agree with what I've said, or if you've got some other ways that you can shoot high key images. We'd all love to see that. So sit back, enjoy this shoot with Cassidy. I'm sure you'll learn a lot out of it. So we're in the studio today. We're shooting some high key portraits. We've got Cassidy as our model today. You'll meet her in a little while. When we're shooting high key, we're talking about predominantly lighter tones in the image. So we need to be a little bit more careful with our lighting. We use, tend to use large light sources, um, frontally lit because we want to eliminate shadows as much as possible. There are a few different lighting scenarios you can use with high key, but the one we're going to start off with is we're using a large soft box directly frontal onto our model 
and we've also got two smaller soft boxes lighting the background. We've got a white background here, but if we didn't white if we didn't light that background, then it's going to disappear into greyness. It's going to darken down because it will be further away from Cassidy. We all know the inverse square law, the further away something is from the light source, the darker it will get. So we need to independently light our background because Cassidy is going to be a little bit further forward of that. So we'll get in, do a few shots and see how we go. Now, what we're doing here with our lighting, we've got, as I said, we've got two soft boxes on the background to lighten up that white background. We need to be careful of the settings of those lights because we don't want to overlight our background. If we overlight it, then we're going to get a little bit of flare coming back into our shot. So we need to light it enough so that it's white, but not being over white, if you know what I mean. So if we light it too much, we're going to get some flare and it's going to degrade the quality of our image. So once we've got our background lights all set to be white, we put our light on our model, our frontal light, and we just adjust it up and down to get the light on Cassidy the way that we want to. And once our balance is right, we should be fine. Another thing to remember too is to position your background lights so that they're not going to light Cassidy at all. Because if we've got those light, that light coming in from the side, lighting her from the side, it's going to interrupt our lighting setup. So we need to keep her in line with those lights so that the light's just lighting the background and not our model. Okay, we're ready to go. We've got Cassidy here sitting patiently, ready to shoot. So I'm going to do a test shot here to start with and there we go. That looks great. Now, what I'm aiming for is I'm aiming for detail in the whites um, in Cassidy's clothing. Um, I want to get that plain white background. But again, if I overlight Cassidy, I'm going to lose detail in her clothing. So I want to keep the integrity of the, the fabric and the pattern of the clothing um, without overlighting it. Okay, so we'll do the same thing, Cassidy. Just turn your face this way a little bit more. Yeah. That's it, okay, here we go. Lovely. Can we turn you around the opposite way, please? That's it, one foot forward, one foot back. Yeah, great, here we go, lovely. Maybe sit on the front of the stool and just put that hand down at the back so your body's a little bit back, yeah? That's it, okay, here we go. Lovely, and can you push the hair back off this side? Okay, still a little bit of hair just resting on here, yeah? That's it, okay. Here we go. Okay, terrific. Now we've changed our model's pose. We're going to do some stand-up shots. Because Cassidy's in the same spot that she was before, the lighting's still going to be fine. Um, we're going to get a white background and our light subject. So we'll shoot a couple of these stand-up shots with various different poses. Okay, Cassidy, lovely. Just looking straight at the camera. Great. Maybe turn your shoulders around that way for me. Yeah, that's it. Good. Turn your face back to this shoulder. Maybe look over towards the corner there. Yeah, that's it. Okay, great. That looks terrific. All right, so we'll change our setup now and we'll go to a different background. Now, because we're shooting high key in our studio, we've got a lot of white surfaces in here. We've got a white ceiling, we've got all white walls, we've got a light colored carpet. And that's going to help us with our high key effect because it's going to be bouncing light all over the place and it helps us to get that overall soft lighting onto our subject. When we're shooting low key, it's a little bit of a problem because we have a lot of light bouncing around, but we need to take care of that when we're shooting that style of image. Also, when we're shooting, when we're checking our histogram, which is a great way to check your exposure when you're doing these sort of things, your histogram is going to look a bit odd. Most of your histogram is going to be towards the right-hand end because we're doing a lot of light tones in our image. So when you look at your histogram, it's going to look a bit different to how you would normally expect it to be. But as long as it's not going off the end of your histogram, as long as your highlight alert isn't showing too much highlights, too much burned out highlights, you should be fine. We want to make sure that all of these white tones are contained within the dynamic range of our camera so that we can work on them later on if we need to or we can use our image straight out of camera. Okay, so we've changed our lighting setup here. We've moved to a white wall that we have in the studio, and I'm using two smaller soft boxes, the ones I used to light the background for the last shot. I'm using them side by side, and I'm shooting between them. 
so that it gives me even light on either side of the camera, very flattering frontal light, and it will light up all of those areas that we don't want the shadows, because in high key, we're trying to avoid shadows as much as we can, and that's why we tend to light from the front. So we'll do a couple of shots of Cassidy here, and I'll show you the results. Okay, lovely Cassidy, just like that. Just focus, okay, here we go. Terrific, maybe move one hand around the front a little bit more. Yep, that's it, great. All right, I'm just gonna get down low and do a full length shot. Okay, just look out over my head a little bit, yeah, that's it. Okay, terrific. All right, now I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit closer. Just do a horizontal shot here. Just turn your face a little bit to the side this way. Yep, that's it. Focus, okay, lovely. Turn your face a little bit more, yep. Okay, that's great. All right, now, can you move your shoulders around? Turn your body around to the left, to my left, your right, yeah? Okay, chin down just a little, looking straight at me. That's it, great. Focus there again, yeah. Okay. All right, that's terrific. Thanks, Cassidy. Now, in this setup, we're, we're doing a similar sort of thing. We're shooting Cassie against a lighter colored background, but I'm using my speed light, just a single speed light to light her. I'm bouncing it off the ceiling so that it gives us that nice soft light. It's going to be fairly frontal onto Cassidy so that we don't get too many shadows. So this is the same sort of thing that we've been doing, but you can achieve it just with a $100 speed light. We'll do a few shots and we'll show you. Okay. All right, just focusing Cassidy. Okay, lovely, here we go. Perfect, yep, just turn that face a little bit to the side here, good. Whoops, gotta wait for my flash to charge. Okay, that's good. Maybe a couple of hands up above your head if you can, yeah. That's it, good. Just drop that chin down a little, yeah. Okay, all right, terrific. Yeah, that's lovely. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit closer to your face here. Oops, did we get a flash then? Nope, okay, here we go. Okay, here we go, yep. Lovely. Okay, that's great. All right, we might just turn you around to the side a little bit so you can look at me over your shoulder. Can we do that? Yep. Yeah, that's it, good. Nice to me. Let's do a... A wider shot. Okay, so that's great with those ones. Yeah. We're just going to do one last set. We'll get you to change your outfit again, yeah. please. And we'll do some shots over against this white background. All right, now the last set we're going to do for our high key shoot today with Cassidy is we're using this, um, this window setting. We've got a few little bits of furniture and things in there, mostly light tones, mostly whites. And we've got Cassidy in a lighter outfit again. So we're going to light her with the large softbox. You'll notice that it's tilted back a little bit because I want to take advantage of lighting the ceiling and the walls as well to try and get enough light in there to fill in all of those shadows to make it look as high key as I possibly can. I've taken a test shot to make sure that my highlights aren't burned out. Um, and we're going to expose Cassidy similar to how the background is because she's back close to the background. If she was moved further forward from that background, we would have a discrepancy between the light on her and the light in the background. So we wouldn't be able to get those tones as um, scrunched in as we possibly can with a high key. When we're doing high key, the purpose of the exercise is to keep the tonal range as narrow as possible. So we wanna keep the whites and the lights as tight as we possibly can. We don't wanna have any discrepancy with our shadows and our highlights. So we'll do a couple of shots here of Cassidy and we'll show you the results. Okay, great Cassidy, up nice and tall. We're doing full length shots here. So I'm just gonna focus on your face. Here we go, nice exposure. That's great. One thing I need to be conscious of when I'm shooting vertical lines is that I'm not shooting too, too much down on Cassidy or too much up at her because those lines are going to converge one way or the other. Ideally, I wanna get in the middle so that I can hold my camera vertical, the back of my camera is vertical so those lines are going to be straight up and down. It saves me a bit of time in post. Okay, lovely, keep those hands up there, yep. That's great. 
Okay, terrific. And just look into the mirror so you can see me, if you can. Yeah, that's it. That's good. Just going to do a horizontal shot of that. Get my focus again. Okay, here we go. Lovely. Okay, just turn your eyes to me, Cassidy. Yep. That's it. Focusing. Great. Okay, just maybe put your thumbs in your pockets for me. Yeah, that's great. Chin down just a little. Yeah. Okay. Right, here we go. Good. Can you push all your hair over the back? Yeah, that's it. Good. Focus. Here we go. And a couple of smiling shots for mum. That's it. Wonderful. Okay. I say a couple, but I mean one. Yeah, that's okay. All right, so that finishes up our high key shoot with Cassidy. Um, she's been a fantastic model. We've got some terrific shots today. Okay, so that was cool, wasn't it? We got some great images with Cassidy there. If you're interested to see the opposite style of imagery, low key portraits, then I've got a link up here for that. That will be very interesting, totally opposite to what we're doing here, but just as valid and the results look amazing.